Give yourself a hand, everyone. Give yourself a pat on the back. Uh, we just saved the internet. Uh, it didn't take any amount of effort, but we did it, okay? Uh, other week or so, I did these two videos. This one here, a demonstration of modern web bloat, and the war against web bloat continues. Okay, that's the sequel. This is now the sequel of the sequel. This is the, this is the end of the trilogy, because we have actually fixed everything. So in these videos, I complain about the fa fact that whenever you look for a recipe online, uh, you have all of these millions of informational sites that are all garbage because they have ads and trackers and JavaScript and all the, you know, mo things moving around. Oh, we see that you have disabled ads. Could you just could you enable those? Uh, oh, well, do you want to take our cookies? Blah, blah, blah. All that nonsense. Um, and I told people, listen, listen, it would be a very easy thing for someone to just make a simple recipe site. You could even have it managed with Git, okay? And you can have people submit recipes for free. And a bunch of people started doing those things, started making these web websites, but I figure I should probably be the one, since I'm talking about it, who creates the site where everyone can, you know, be on the same page. Okay, so that's what I did. Based.cooking. Based.cooking. That is the website. Apparently, dot .cooking is a top-level domain nowadays. This is what it looks like right now. This is subject to change, but look at this. A nice informational site. Uh, in, in fact, we have, I don't know, we probably have around a hundred recipes, maybe more now. I don't know, it looks like a lot. You'll see these nice tags for different things. I'll explain how this works in a bit. Uh, there are no ads, there's no anything. I mean, the only sense in which this site is monetized is that I've started a, bit, uh, a Bitcoin donation thing if you want to donate to the site's fund. Uh, but right now, I'm just running this on my own VPS. I might get its own VPS uh, in a little bit if it if it gets big enough. But anyway, let's look at let's look at a recipe. Let's go to beef goulash. Okay, this is one of the ones with pictures. I actually most of them right now don't have pictures. The requirements I'm saying right now is that you have to actually take a picture of the thing that you make yourself. Okay, you can't just get some stupid uh, you know search on Google for like a public domain picture that might be a picture of a slightly different recipe. So all, every page looks like this, just they have a section for ingredients, a section for instructions, that's it. And at the very end, um, the people who submit the articles, this guy in this case, uh, you can put uh, you know links to your website or a donation page or something like that. And you'll see, again, they are tagged with all this stuff. Let's click on the beef tag. Let's see what else is there. If we, oh, I have beef, I wanna make something, I can make something from this list, okay. Um, and of course, oh, actually on the main page as well, of course, I, I think I mentioned there's a tag list there as well. So, um, very nice and simple, responsive CSS. This is all you need. It should work on mobile and everything. For example, if our screen is a little smaller, actually at the beginning, you'll see if you have a really wide screen, there are three columned lists just to have everything on one page. I'm thinking about how to change this, you know, have a catalog structure or something like that, but I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but if you reduce the size, uh, for example, if you have a very narrow screen, it'll just be one list, so everything fits. Um, it is also, if you're one of those like weirdos and perverts who uses a light theme on your browser, um, this will display as a light site. You don't need JavaScript for that. I don't know what, anyway. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. And so uh, what you can do is you can go to the GitHub site. This is how it works. Um, if you want to submit a recipe, um, let's go to source. Let's actually look, what was the one we just looked at? Beef goulash or something like that. So when you submit a recipe, you just submit it as a markdown file. Okay, it doesn't actually show the source of this. Let's look at the source of this. So this is all it looks like, okay? Uh, ingredients, instructions, blah, blah, blah. Uh, just markdown. This is what people submit, and then it is compiled by the website into a static site, uh, or by a static site generator. Now, uh, originally when I made this thing, I was using SSG5. That's a static site generator. Uh, I have not done a video on it. I think Wolfgang did a video on it, if you want to look that up, SSG5. Uh, and that's what I was using originally, but someone opened a very nice pull request. Oh, and by the way, well, this thing also gives you RSS and stuff like that. Um, and he suggested I move to something that I guess him and his friend made called Blogit, and this is very nice. It is a makefile-based static site generator. It can deal with tags. It can create an RSS feed and an Atom feed automatically. Um, so people can subscribe to updates and stuff like that. Actually, I think I pulled up. Yeah, I pulled up before. Uh, so this is what you can get. Let's see. Let me actually go back to the website. You can get the RSS feed link or the Atom feed link. Put them in your RSS uh, reader. And this is what it'll look like. You'll get updates. Oh, there's a new recipe on shrimp and grits. Okay, here's what it looks like. I don't even have to log on to the site. 
the RSS feed automatically contains the entire page, uh, links with everything. So if you just want to look, it, it is just very convenient, okay? Very nice stuff if you want to subscribe to the site. Um, additionally, what was I going to say? Like, this site is actually usable, okay? I, I will say that in that... Literally, you guys know I do not use a phone, okay? That is not my thing. If I have my phone on me, it's probably for like an emergency or something weird. But the other day, I literally, because this site is so usable, I, I think there was something I, I was getting uh, um, ingredients for in the store. It is so nice to actually use this site because it loads as quickly as, you know, a local thing on your... I mean, it's not a big bloated site. It works on your phone. I can look at my ingredient ingredients list when I'm in the store or something like that. It is very convenient. It actually works. Okay, that's all I want. It doesn't have to be pretty. I might make this index page a little more pretty. This index page is actually automatically generated by the static site generator. It actually, it goes through. So when people submit recipes, um, they add tags to the bottom. I don't think they show up. Well, they show up as this, right? So they show up as tags. The static site generator automatically generates a tag list with all this kind of stuff, a tag cloud, however you want to put it. All of that stuff is is automatic. So this is what the internet is supposed to look like, okay? This is not a difficult thing. This is not, a, don't interpret this as a flex, okay? Yes, is this site the best recipe site on the internet? Maybe, but that's not because this is a good site. It's because all the other ones are terrible, okay? It doesn't take that much to run a website. Uh, this I just put online. I probably only put like maybe three or four recipes on this thing uh, just to start it out as a proof of concept and people just logged on to GitHub to add stuff themselves. And so if they want to add something, uh, all, you know, they can just put their own links or whatever. That That's the only incentive they need to contribute to the site. Um, now, you can go here right now. You could submit recipes. If you want to revise recipes, if you feel like something's missing uh, uh, an image, you can submit a small WebP image. There, I usually don't want them over 150K or something like that. Uh, most of them are like that. I mean, uh, let's see, the beef goulash one had one. Um, this is probably, you know, it's definitely less than 200k. Um, so just very simple, if, if you make one of these recipes and take a picture of it, send it in if it looks nice. Um, or if you want to make any changes to these recipes, you can just go on the GitHub, make any kind of changes you want. Um, nice and simple. See, this is how the internet's supposed to be. This is how it's supposed to be, kids. And it's not difficult. And it's not costing me a million thousand dollars. Uh, whatever Bitcoin donations, which have been, you know, mostly nominal, I'm sure that they are covering my costs, even if I have to, you know, rent my own VPS, extra VPS to do this, because it's not expensive, it can be done, base stock cooking, okay, let this be an example, not just for recipe sites, but what, for any kind of informational site on the internet, okay, this is how you do it, you don't have to do, do, don't run up with some JavaScript nonsense to me, okay, we, we don't do that soy dev stuff, we don't do none of that stuff, when a simple HTML page will suffice. Thank you for watching.